Yeah, it is. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. I'm about to feed him to the sharks right now. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. You know the ground is on. Yeah. Everybody that trains, you know the game. Yeah. So let's get it. Uh. Slap it up, bump it, and roll. Hey. Yeah, that's the way that it goes. Right. Ain't no better way to better yourself in this game. You're feeling the growth. That's, that's time on the mat. We put in the work. Believe it ain't easy, I know. Yeah. But we train for the love of the game, the love of the art. Now slap it up, bump it, let's roll. Let's roll. Welcome to episode 16 of the BJJ Campaign Podcast. My name is Jeff Boone. I'm an A3 blue belt, one stripe. And this is Phil Kors, A2, white belt, four stripes. Shirley, let's jump right into it today. Hot off the new breed Charlotte World Championship. World Championship. I oh, Charlotte. Yes, yes. Yeah. Right. yeah. Concord. Yeah, Concord. Whatever, same thing. Almost Charlotte. Yeah, almost Charlotte. Um... Let's start out by talking, you know, team fight to win. Great representation in the kids. Uh, yeah, in the adults. Uh, a lot of great matches. Um, I think it, I think the big thing that I took home, it seemed like everybody was having fun. Yeah, I agree, 100%. You know, it was, it, everyone was excited. The kids, it's great to see them with their medals, you know, and they're all happy and smiles and everything. So, so it was really good. So let's talk about... Um, Let's talk about your competition. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some differences in this competition versus other competitions. Uh, just for myself, personally going into it, I had a lot more confidence in the, in the actual game plan. Wow, there shocker. Was, there was shocker. no game you plan had, the first couple I've times. tried to yeah. tell you that, right? Yeah, I've, I've argued that the... You know, the game plan's a good idea, but my jiu-jitsu wasn't anywhere near able to actually go through with the game plan right um so yeah like having one you know helped out a lot um but yeah it's kind of funny that you know i've said you were right about this and you oh, stop looking at me like that I'm, you know? listen i'm just <laughs> taking it all in that's all that's all i'm just taking it all in yeah you were right about that one so that, that for was everyone out there no matter how much or how little jujitsu you know mm -hmm. have a game plan going in it helps it's a good idea it helps it, even if the game plan goes to shit right out the window right at the very start of the match at least you had a game plan yeah so uh definitely more confident going in more calm uh did the same thing uh grips again in the first one for sure uh on my right hand and a little bit on the triangle uh i was squeezing um pretty hard yeah, the, the left hand grip I couldn't really get, so only one arm was was getting tired. But the second one went a whole lot smoother, um, no over gripping, just kind of getting comfortable and getting out. I think there's a lot to be said. Like I did also before the match, take a few minutes to kind of stretch out. Um, but there's just something about being a lot more comfortable rolling when you're kind of warmed up, you know. When yeah. You had a few minutes and. I didn't rush there super early this morning, um, mm -hmm. but you know when you're kind of staying around for a couple hours and then you just got to go out, um, that's probably one of the hardest parts. Yeah, the first match is always the toughest <coughs> because of that. You know, it's it's always good to have a little bit of warm up. You know, Dion yeah. went and ran a little bit before you get get a sweat going. I think mm -hmm. that's always a good idea. Yeah, for sure. So I'm gonna you know take that and kind of work on that from here. Maybe. Do some quick drills or something next time. That was kind of mm -hmm. crossed my mind today. Um, but but yeah, no, I think the stretching was a good idea beforehand. Felt a little bit better kind of physically uh, before the first one. Just you go in super cold when you got to go 100 miles an hour, whether I want to or not, it seems. But uh, a lot more calmer, I think, for sure. Um, 100%. Than, you can see it on your face couple. leading up to the match. And the only comment I think I made in your first match was. Loosen that grip. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I could see you just, you were on it, man. Yeah. You were just, you, everything yeah, you I was had. Hunting. I was definitely hunting for that one in the first. Um, but I was happy with how transition, the same one I work on all the time, the cross collar to the triangle. Um, mm -hmm. 
if I didn't get that, I transition right to the arm bar. You know, it's all part of the same thing. I've been working on forever. Um, what I thought was real funny though, on the on the drive back, you know, I'm like, we sit there, we drove for a half hour last night, twenty mm-hmm. minutes, whatever it was, and yeah. I'm, I'm drilling. My game plan was to to go for the trip takedown, get past the guard, and either finish from with the uh, the arm triangle head and arm or take the back. And uh, didn't do any of that. No. You know, not even close. Nope. Not at all. So, I think that's hilarious. Um, I said it before, I think it was Garrett was talking to me one time. He's like, you know, you can go do whatever you want, but you get into these, uh, you know, you get into the competition setting and you just immediately, you just revert to your comfort, whatever you're comfortable with, right? Yeah. So, I'm pretty much, I'm going to find a way to end up in the closed guard, you know? Yes, you are. That's no matter what. You know, as I say, like my double legs and elaborate guard pull. Like, I'm going to find a way. <laughs> it really to, is. To try to get my legs. Or closed. an elaborate Von Flew setup. That's true. Either way. Yeah. <laughs> One or the other. Whatever they go for the guilty, boom, Von Flew. Yeah. So, I get it. yeah. Um, I really wanted to try to be on top of that. I mean, I was talking to Marshall 10 minutes before the match. And I'm like, yeah, I really don't want to be on the bottom. Uh, you know, that's a sting. You know, that's if somebody gets on top of me, it's going to be trouble. Just to, for the audience member, uh, uh, Phil kind of had a little bit of an under rib injury, probably what a week. Yeah, it was a week ago. Yeah, so Sunday, it was, a, it was yeah. Sunday. Uh, little pull uh, for being the stud that he is. He forged right through that and, and competed anyway. I, I, I didn't. It didn't seem no. like there was any positions no. that it really bothered you. No, yeah. uh, no, it was, it was good. Um, but I was like, yeah, if I get on the bottom, I'm gonna be in trouble. And then, you know, I mean, you walk out on the mat, and I'm like, yeah, let's figure out how to get in the guard. Yeah, yeah. Went for the loop choke, uh, but mm-hmm. I drill a lot. So again, it's just cool to, in one way, it's you know, you don't do what you want to do, but it's it's cool to see that you know the drilling really always comes back to the drilling. You know, I drill the loop choke the most. That's what I just naturally go for. Mm-hmm. And I drill and work out of the guard all the time. That's what I'm gonna do. So. Yep. Um, it's cool to see again that that's it works right you know you drill it you practice it mm-hmm. and then you try to figure this stuff out and what you have to do from there and it works but uh that was well cool. i think i think just the game plan alone gives you a little bit more peace of mind going into the match again it doesn't matter if it goes right out the window right at the beginning but just having that game plan of what you want to accomplish and what you want, how you want to do it. Yeah, I think it's it's a good thing for a positive mindset. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, and and a hundred percent agree with you on everything you said on your confidence level. Um, my confidence level in you was much higher in this one. You know, and I was thinking back to the first time I competed because I I went into that knowing I don't I don't have a chance. Like right. I, I didn't expect to win. I didn't have high expectations. Uh, my mindset going in is like I get beat up all the time at the gym. I'm gonna get beat up here, but you know they say it helps. So yeah. let's see what it's all about, you know. And then you were I. I'm now realizing you were a lot more nervous about it than I was. Yeah. Uh, at that time, but it was. it's funny looking back at that now. I can kind of see I, I didn't realize it at the time, but that's that's funny. But yeah, I, I mean I knew I was. I knew where I was at that time. And sure. I just knew I had to do it. Um, it was something I wanted to do. Um, Losing sucks, but mm-hmm. you know you have to kind of go through it. I think in order to to grow from it and learn from it, and mm-hmm. I learned I think a lot in those. I mean, can kind of take away. I think I, I think if I never did it and I waited till like now and I was more comfortable, I would have been I would have done a lot worse today. You know, a hundred a hundred percent you would have because guess what? That first match that you don't remember anything right. from yeah, 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 yeah. would have been that first match that you had today. Mm-hmm. It could have gone a lot differently. Yeah. <coughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I'm I'm proud of you, man. I I, I really I really am. I'm I'm really proud of how hard you work. I mean, you always are constantly working hard, and and just how hard that you think about what it is. It teaches me. Um, it teaches me that to think that way as well. It teaches me to say, all right, from. From this, I can also do this, this, and this, which we're going to get into a little bit later uh, in our kind of grappler's guide for very new people mm-hmm. that we're going to talk about. But um, to 
go back uh, to go back to the matches we had. We did have uh, Dion from our school who was competing for the first time. Yeah. And man, did he he did great. He did yeah. great. He uh, won one match, lost one match, and just he was very solid throughout. And and never, it, I I admire him because I think I think that he was very calm. Obviously, you're yeah. always going to have. Everyone has nerves, though. So if you if you don't think that you're going to have nerves going into yeah. the competition, you are. Yeah. You know, every, I have. Everyone has it, but just how he kept his composure and really stuck with his game plan very well. Mm -hmm. And I was I was really was really happy for him um, that he did do well, and, and he had stiff competition there. Mm -hmm. uh, Ashley, you know, winning gold uh, in in no gi. And silver in in gi, um, two two of the what was it? Is the that's the drop sanagi? I think that's it. Yeah. So that's why she comes up afterwards and she's like, yeah, you know, I, I, I feel like I should have won that last one. I'm like, who cares? Like that armbar you did was amazing. Yeah. And that throw you did was awesome. Like, yeah. She hit that drop sanagi like three times. It was great. Yeah. She's getting I saw, really good. I saw it in her father, and I was like, she put that on video, and he's like looking for it, looking for it. I was like, see now, I was like, there it is. I was like, that's awesome. So yeah. Charlie gets a chance to see that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Shout out to Charlie for uh, for teaching that. He taught it well. Um, but again, Ashley and, and all the kids, you know, all the kids, Lee, uh, Liam, Gavin, Gavin, all the kids, Adelaide, S Sydney, um, you know, all the kids that competed. It was just, it was really fun to see. It was fun to see kids out there. Um, you know, the kids that we helped coach. Sure, 100%. Uh, enjoying themselves, and they did, I mean, they all had smiles on their face, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, they did really well. Um, I missed a few of the matches. I got there a little bit later than I have in the past, but um, what I did see, everything went really well. Everybody did a good job. Mm -hmm. uh, Joey did a good job stepping in and coaching and stuff, I thought. Yeah. I thought that was cool. Uh, and Christopher, one of the older of uh, the kids now, he's been in drilling a long time. Um, just watching him compete and just look way more mature out there than I am. Yeah. It was hilarious. Yeah, he won the big belt. He won the <laughs> strap, baby. <laughs> Christopher won the so strap. He, he goes out there and he's cool and calm and, and and all that. and It's like second nature to him. Yeah. you know He's competed a lot. Yeah. It's funny. I mean, it looks back like I played baseball as a kid and you know, and all the other stuff, and the games never really bothered me at that point. And that's almost like what it looks like with him. But that's a team sport. It's totally different, you know? It is totally different. Unless you, you know, Bill Buckner, the, the last play or something, you know, it's nobody really points to just one person. Yeah. Know, with this, it's... When you're out there, it seems like it's all you. Obviously, there's... Without the people you're training with, you're not going to get anywhere. But, you know, when you're out there, it feels like it's all you at that point. You know? Yeah. And it could be a lot tougher when you lose but I mean just the way he's very calm and collected and cool out there it's it's awesome to see yeah and, and his attitude he, he, he didn't have any losses this time but it, he, even his attitude win or lose he's, he's matured beyond his years in that and um, you know very respectful and just, just love seeing that the, the character development and the kids from the competition mm -hmm. you know <clears throat> Um, I'm trying to think. Is there anything? I can't remember anything else eventful. Uh, Joey won his match. That was a great match. Uh, the blue belt division. Yeah, he had a tough one with another. Now that he's um, wrestling, he went up against the blue belt, who was also a wrestler. Yeah. And that was just back and forth and very even. Um, Could have gone either way. Yeah, it was a really good match. So that was that was fun to watch, um, but yeah, that was. I mean, I had a great day. I, I think it went awesome. It was yeah. fun to watch. Yeah, agreed. And all the people who came out to support. Yeah, everyone. and also people like uh, you know um, Chris, Liam's father. I was shocked when Liam. Like, I guess I realized it because I know he's told me in the past. But he's like, you forget because Liam's been there with Chris for I think three or four of the competitions I've been to. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's just there supporting and hanging out. I think even when he's not competing, I think it's really good that 
and awesome that he comes out to hang out. You know, it's just the team environment's cool. It's one of the best parts to jujitsu, I think. You know, and and spending time with people and cheering them on and all that stuff is fun. Um, so I was really surprised. You know, he did really well today. He won a couple matches and everything. And when he was like, "It's his first time," I was like, "No, it's not." Like I've seen you here a bunch of times, so I totally I mean, forgot. You know that it's awesome when he did really well for the first time. Yeah, absolutely. And you know that's for all the listeners out there. Go out and support your team. I mean, I mean you're going you're going a. It doesn't matter if you're thinking about doing a competition or not. You're going to see what that competition atmosphere is, and you're going to be there for the support of your teammates. Um, and heck, you might even you know pick up a thing or two whenever you're there from just watching the matches and maybe watching some of the more advanced folks go or watching, you know, just what your division looks like just so it's not so intimidating whenever you do actually do a competition. Yeah. You know, kind of see see the atmosphere, see that none of the none of the competitions ever run on time that yeah. I've been to. Yeah. You know? Um, this one's cool. I do like how they have the schedule available ahead of time. I can see it like on my phone. You mm-hmm. know, they get the bracket up and the schedule and stuff, so I kind of know where I'm supposed to be and whatnot, because the other one's kind of, when they just throw out the rough schedule, and they're like, expect to be there, um, you know, be there by this time, but you may not go till 4, but we want you there at 11, you know, it kind of makes for a long day. Yeah. Um, and it, you just don't know. And that was new software, from what I understand, for New Breed, so. It's I, the same one they had last time, but. Was it? Yeah, it's, but it's. It's very nice to have. You know, yeah. Just an idea. Because waiting around is, I mean, that's probably the one of the worst parts. 100% you know, it is. Yeah, yeah you just want to get that over with, right? You know, you want to get in there and, and do it. Whatever whatever the outcome, you just want to get in there and do it. I mean, yeah. you know. Um, but, yeah, I think I think looking back on it, uh, it's, it's kind of helped me, too, for preparing for my next competition. Because I think that, I really do believe that what we're doing with drilling is really going to help a lot. And that's that's my biggest takeaway from this is the drilling stuff that I've talked about that I want to work on that we did last night where I did a takedown, worked into a guard pass, and and then worked to a submission in the unbelly, you know, mount, take him back, whatever. If I can keep drilling that stuff, then eventually I'm going to start doing that in live rolling. And mm-hmm. then eventually the, the positions I want to be, they'll be where I try to get to in the competition. Yeah, and just having Brent there to kind of guide you whenever that, you... That was a huge there. detail on that, the grabbing of the gi um, yeah. on the pants for passing the guard. Because I'm always putting my hand there, which gets me in a Kimura and doesn't really work. You know, right. the pants was a lot more effective. So that was awesome that he was able to help with that stuff. Uh, that just for the drill. audience, Phil was drilling the, the inside trip, and whenever he'd come down, he'd end up in kind of a half guard position with my knee down on the mat and grabbing the inside crease of my gi pants and pinning it to the mat in order to do what well, I think you ended up doing the uh, getting the underhook and or grabbing the lapel, putting the elbow in tight, and doing the Knee slide. Yeah, I was doing more of like a knee cut, knee slide. Yeah. He, he was showing a, like a back set, which looked way more efficient than what I was doing. Yeah. But it wasn't practical for me to drill that last night for today. Right. It's what I'd like to work towards. But, and I was thinking about this on the ride back, but this whole, <clears throat> that whole plan of drilling to make that my new go-to comfort spot where I want to be, um, really just reinforced it, you know, and that's the biggest mm-hmm. takeaway I had today because I was... I immediately went to the guard, like I said, which I'm very comfortable with, but it's not where I, it's not the best position for me to be. Mm-hmm. So, um, we really just kind of hammered that home that I want to drill that, work on that stuff, and I think it's the right decision, and I think it's going to benefit both of us. Yeah. And everybody else is doing it. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. And, you know, I did some drilling earlier in the week with Dion, same thing, you know, I think it's... I think it's the same thing. It's that reinforcement, even if you don't get in those positions, it's that reinforcement of having the idea of what you want to do, uh, whether you do it or not, that, that gives comfort, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so, congratulations to everyone who competed today, especially you, Phil. 
It was a phenomenal performance. And for those of you listening, uh, both of Phil's matches are posted on the BJJ Campaign podcast. The first one, he finished, I don't know, maybe three minutes. It was three minutes with the uh, with the triangle. And the second one, uh, he was not giving up on that cross collar. I was like, <laughs> was it that? No, it was the first match that I yelled bravo. Uh, yeah, first one you yelled bravo. Yeah. You looked over and smiled at me. Um, <laughs> uh, but but the second match, he was not going to be denied the cross choke. That was yeah, I like the the thing. That's like my go-to. I yeah, mean, it's it goes back to what you're comfortable and what you're gonna try doing. I, that everything for me starts there. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Flawless. But um, so moving on, you know, it's been really cool because I love this everybody's resolution because it seems like a significant amount of people. Are saying I want to start jujitsu for yeah. the new year. It's a lot of people, and we've got like in our fundamentals class the other night we had 32 people in there. It was a full mat, and a couple of uh, new guys. Let's see, there was actually four. Was it four new guys last last night or night before? It was um, Travis, Jason, Chris, and Matt that were all there, and um, and then. Jason and Travis stayed for open mat Friday after fundamentals. Brent Kotke was playing them. Brent Simpson was one of the uh, Brown Belts uh, instructors. Um, and he did the fundamentals, taught the fundamentals class and was there for open mat. And so I want to first address whenever Travis asked the question, what did he ask you, Phil? Yeah, because I was... Uh when we were drilling the takedowns, it's clear that, you know, I'm not great at those. And he was, he was like, why do you... Opportunity for improvement, let's just put it that way. <laughs> There's a lot of those opportunities. Opportunity yeah. <laughs> so, you gotta, you know, you when you do the jiu-jitsu match, um, I think it's his third class, fourth class. Yeah. Um, he's like, you start, like, standing up or on the ground? And I was like, you start standing up. He's like, well, why don't you practice... Uh, standing up more if you start standing up so that's a really good question great question and uh goes to show that three four classes in we all have things to learn from everyone <laughs> and my answer basically just was you know the stuff on the ground is so much more fun true I spend a lot more time there it is true <laughs> that is true we do take downs yeah we do take downs and, and you know Unfortunately, sometimes the mat's too full. It's actually kind of a double-edged sword, right? Fortunately, the mat's full, but again, we got great training partners all the time. But unfortunately, it's too full to really have you know twenty-five guys trying to do takedowns in there. That just doesn't work, and you would yeah. hit mm-hmm. each other and injure each other. That'd be tough. Yeah, it would not. not I, I guess tough. for the takedown, um, I guess for me personally, we start standing all the time. Sure, and I'll, I'll attempt. Some different takedowns here or there. Most of the time, I seem to quit on it. Um, I think Most, it was, yeah, like 99% of the time. Yeah, I think yeah. like one or two weeks ago, John was like, you know, that was a good entry and you just didn't believe in it or you quit on it. And yeah. I'm like, yes, I did. You know, <laughs> I went halfway and then that was it. So, it's a lot of it's in my head and I just need to keep working on it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, because I don't really care if I get taken down, I guess. Yeah. That's no, the problem, point. you know, because yeah. I'll just close up the guard. Mm-hmm. And I'll figure out. I usually try to find a way to close the guard. So if I get taken down, I don't really care. Um, right. And that's the wrong mindset. And again, another one, another one to work on. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Uh, very, very salient question by Travis. Insightful. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's nice because there's open mats. You know, it, and I think we've said this before, but at, at, at our school, it's like we're in Denver. It's ten classes before you you spar. Yeah. But, you know, Jason and Austin, or Jason and Travis uh, stayed around, and they they were watching, and, you know, near near the end after we drilled, uh, you know, I, I said, Travis, you want to work a little bit on top and, and, you know, do whatever. And he said, sure. You know, it wasn't rolling sparring. It was just more positional stuff. I was going to yeah. let him work and see and what's going on. Go ahead, sorry. No, go, go. I think that what that helps so much with, too, is, like, 
when they're trying to drill the stuff brand new, you just have no idea of basic posture stuff, and, and the position doesn't even make sense, let alone any of the techniques or moves yet. You know, it's just like you're sitting and somebody's hugging you with their feet. You know, it like doesn't make sense yet. Mm -hmm. um, I think that just going real slow, like there's no, it's just being in that position is, and, and I was more guilty of it than anybody where I wanted to do 10 million classes until I understood jujitsu before I wanted to roll. It's just the wrong idea. It's like, because you can't understand jujitsu. Exactly. Until you're in the position that it's like, oh, that makes sense. Uh, you know, like, being in it and just taking the time to experience the positions, you know, helps out. It's going to progress a lot faster. And obviously, I went 100% the very first time. Of course. Just, yeah. They show who's boss, obviously. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just kidding, folks. I did not do that. I did not be a very good training partner, so you should not do that either. But uh, but whenever he got in my guard, and, and, uh, and I, w I was lucky enough to work with Travis, uh, once or twice uh, his first couple classes and, and he got my card and he was like I don't know what to do I'm like right. yeah you do because remember we did the we did the Gracie pass the other day that's the one pass you know right and he was like oh yeah yeah that's it so you know starting out just teaching that engage the hips mm -hmm. engage your posture and you know then because because and this is for the new folks whenever you're there you don't have you have really no idea what what to even start with. So just having someone to you know sit down and say, "All right, get get your posture, you know, engage your hips, and now start the Gracie pass." And then whenever he did the Gracie pass, you know, just doing that and he kind of stepped to the side, you know, allowing for the triangle. I just put the put the triangle on, and he was like, "Oh, what happened there?" And, and then. Then you can go from there. So, so then I was like, just move forward. Make sure to put your weight forward, and and go from there. And so then he does that, passes my guard. So then it's once again he's in side control, and he's like, what do I do here, right? So taking them through the positions of, all right, first get comfortable in the position. One of the things about passing is if you don't maintain the pass, you've just done a lot. Yeah. Right. If you if you let someone reconstitute the guard after working hard to to do the pass, a it gives them a it gives them kind of a mental boost and kind of gives gives you uh, the opposite. Right. And so so just try to, to establish that position. I took them through to show them proper you know form for getting side control, and then and then think about advancing. Right. Think about advancing to mount, even though. I don't think at this point he's seen that uh, mount from side control, but just, you know, saying, all right, if I push up on you, go to knee on belly, you know, get them familiar with turns yeah. and get them familiar with the positions because they don't know. The, you know, if you've had four or five classes, you don't no. know what knee on belly is. Like, like Sarah said in the comment, I was really confused at knee on belly, N-E-O in belly. And, uh, and, uh, there's even a shirt. There's a ton have, of shirts that have that. Yeah. A ton of shirts that uh, have that. And, <laughs> and it's funny because you, because when we say it, it just does sound like Neon Belly. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah Neon Belly. It's not I think knee I, on Unfortunately, belly. I learned of the term with someone's knee on my belly, so it made perfect sense, unfortunately, the first time I heard it. Right. But, and, yeah, it does sound like that. Right. So, so just getting familiar with those positions, uh, passing. Remaining calm, uh, being not rigid in those positions, you know, flowing fluidly in those positions. That's that's kind of, and this is kind of guidance for those people who are just beginning to roll. You know, get get an upper belt or get someone that's um, that you know, like me or you, that that notably work with the new students all the time, right? Uh, and and get them to to say, all right, take me through this role, right? And just by doing that, it familiarizes you, it, it familiarizes you with the positions that you should be in, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and you work through a few of them, and 
Like even just sitting in the garden, I, I remember starting out and I do it with, with more people and stuff. Like I don't necessarily go to like slam a squeak on and like mount them immediately. But like as they move around, I, I'll flick my hips one way or pull an arm, you know. As their balance and base is compromised, I just try to pull, push, whatever in, in whatever direction so they can feel that, you know. Um, and just start becoming aware of how you should be postured and how to get your base and balance in those positions and um, just kind of experience it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's funny because I did this kind of the same thing with Jason afterwards too and then whenever he uh he put his knee up uh whenever he was in my closed guard he put his knee up and we just worked that the hook sweep uh in the fundamentals class mm -hmm. so he did that exact position and i hope just because we just yeah, done it yeah. i hook sweeped him and he was like oh yeah he was like oh that's yeah i'm like yeah that's the exact, exact position that that's good for and so you, I mean, and it's like what better way to kind of just drive it home like this is what's going to happen and until you sit here and do it it's not going to make sense you know but at the same time that's what's so cool about the open mat because it's typically a smaller number of people mm -hmm. um, and you have the space and time to kind of work on that stuff um, the sparring class is a little bit harder because there's more people mm -hmm. um, a little and, more structured and you're trying to get your you know, your training in, right? Mm -hmm. um, sure. Also. So, the open mats are so good for that, and especially the Friday one, because it's typically um, other people will have, you know, lives and stuff to do, and we like to go in there. Whatever. <laughs> Don't little, understand that. A little bit smaller of a class, a little more attention from Brent or Ryan or John when he's in there. Like, it's... That's my favorite part of it. The open mats are perfect. That's my favorite part, and... Folks, if you if you're out there and you don't go to open mats, you're cheating yourself. You are because you get a free private lesson at open mats, semi-private lesson yeah. at open mats, right? I mean, because I can't. I mean, the number of times that we've picked Ryan's brain or John's brain or Brent's brain after that, just you know, them offering up yeah. things that that lead to a whole other conversation about. Other things where you can get better and just have a, a deeper level of understanding to the positions because it, it's 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 like every it's every day and Brent um, Brent said it to me it, it, it was so funny because we were doing the self-defense the choke the standing choking self-defense yeah and typically this is the one where if the, the, they're choking you and kind of pushing forward on you right. that you that you do the hand through grab the elbow hip toss right mm -hmm. and you know and before they they weren't he didn't show it with the the opponent moving forward and I asked him whenever he was coming around during the fundamentals I was like is it better if your opponent is pushing into you with this he's like yeah I'm, I'm gonna get to that and he was, and it was, it made me feel really good because he said, he said, Jeff, you know, you, I can tell, you know, that, that, that you're thinking about things more because you're asking the detailed questions that I started asking whenever I was starting to be, you know, blue and purple belt. You were thinking about those things, which it made me feel really good because that is, that is the benefit of having seen the technique half dozen times, right? Yeah. Having, having it been taught a half dozen times. And so, you know, just, it, it feels good. And then afterwards to be able to, to pick their brains and open that and, and just kind of, I don't know, just talk about jujitsu with people who know a lot more than you do about jujitsu. Right. And it's like, uh, I always have a question or I've been stuck somewhere, right? In the last sure. couple of days. So I always have a question to ask them, but even last night going back to that same you know, grabbing the pants to pin the knee when you're passing the guard. That comes up all the time. What's cool when they're when they're able to hang out and, and watch in those open mats, um, they answer questions I don't know I have yet. Yeah. You know, it's a glaring issue for me, but I haven't gotten to the point where I'm realizing that that's the 
the leg I need to pin or there's a better way to pin it. Um, I'm focused on other things at that juncture. Um, so like just having someone point out a real obvious problem to him, um, I didn't even know I had that problem and he helped mm -hmm. me fix it, you know? So Absolutely. that's, that's the kind of stuff that you don't, you don't necessarily get when in a sparring class because he's you training also. Um, you don't necessarily get it um, at some of the other open mats uh, that we do, uh, like for Sunday, because there's uh, that's more of a that's a less structured open mat. I mean, we have a structure, but uh, it's typically us. You know, we're mm -hmm. working out what we can work out, which is Selfish extremely work. beneficial also. But right. you know, there's different formats and they all have their benefits and last night's benefit was I think I'm going to be a little bit better at passing the guard now. Well, I, I think definitely you're going to be better at passing the guard but you're also going to be better at recognizing that 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 whenever you go for a takedown that you should never be in guard. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean that that's that really is the point of it, right? When it, it, the easiest time to pass is in transition. Yeah. Um, and and getting getting back to kind of uh, we kind of got off on a tangent there, which is all right, right? But getting back to like Travis and Jason and learning the new things, you know, um, knowing the hierarchy of positions, and we've kind of gone over those that hierarchy of positions before. I think it was might have been episode three um, that we went over the hierarchy of positions but but just just knowing one thing you know obviously when you're very new you might not even know one thing but if you take the time to go through it with someone just having one thing that you can do so that you're not focused on oh crap you know this is not going well you know having that one thing to be able to go to to say all right here's what I'm going to try mm -hmm. you know and even whenever you even whenever you're on bottom, to try to be comfortable. Like like the one thing that I, I told both of them is that whenever you're on bottom, try to just try never to be on your back. I mean that's a pretty solid rule of thumb. If you're on your back, that's not the position that you want to be in. Mm -hmm. Right? Flat on your I'm talking about flat on your yeah, back. Yeah, so when, when you're somebody's either knotted on you or in side control, yes. you should try to be on your side as much yeah. as possible. Yeah. Yeah, is, is what you mean. It is. You're, you're on your back, but yeah, not when they're inside the control, back. you get up on your side and make frames. You know the concept of frames. Just that's the first time I'm sure that they've yeah. really digested that concept of frames. So if you're new out there and you know somebody passes you a guard, just do the simple things, right? And concentrate on them. Concentrate on that. Just being on your side now. They're going to do what they can to roll you back on your back, but what you you can do is just concentrate, go back to that. And listen, there's there's not much you can do with someone if you if you if you're brand new, but focus on doing those little things and also focus on getting comfortable with the discomfort that you're going to feel, right? Doing things to to avert the pressure that's inevitably going to come or doing things in your mind to uh, try to minimize the effects in your mind, just to try to uh, deal with it in a positive way. Yeah. Um, and I was very excited to see they were both taking notes. I think that's awesome. Um, I wish I would have started taking notes before. Smarter start than I got. I think we've said it before, Philly. You're <laughs> not the brightest out there. <laughs> but we do have a th enthusiasm. That's That's, true. Yeah. that's the thing. Um, the, but, greatest, the greatest compliment I ever got, I think, I believe it was actually from Yona when she said I, I was the most show uppy person she she ever met. That was the best one I ever got because I'm good at that one. It's kind of a tenant. Can't be, can't be <laughs> in the game if you're not there. <laughs> Cannot be in the game if you're not there. That is a, that is a compliment. Yeah, show up your person. That looks up your name. Um, anything else, Phil? Uh, that's about it for I think. I'm good. Um, very good. If 
people want to support the podcast, how do they do that? Uh, a lot of more people are liking us on Podbean and following. That's cool. Uh, the Facebook. Um, like questions, the Facebook page, yeah. Questions and, and topics things always uh, helps. And like anytime you see something, um, like that positional thing was cool. Um, Richard uh, posted that. Yeah. Something very similar to that on Facebook, um, our, our group, um, which was a cool thing that kind of helps get an idea. And anytime you come up with something, like you said, mind blowing moments for me is like engaging your hips in the guard. Um, just share those because that's like there's other people who don't know that, you know, and other people who just take it for granted. So. Anytime you come up with one of those like mind blowing things, like I'd love to hear about it for sure. No, we both love to hear about it. That's for sure. Um, go to go to our YouTube channel, BJJ Campaign Podcast. Um, I believe that the video did not kick out this time, so it's amazing. We're, we're gonna have an entire episode. That's good. One of few on there, um, and subscribe to us on you know Podbean or. Google Play, or can they subscribe? Can they subscribe on um, what was the one you did? Spotify. Spotify. I believe you just like follow or like or something. Follow or like, yeah, yeah. Follow or like us on. There's usually a heart button somewhere. That's yeah, the, that's the one we're after. That's what we're looking for. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Our Instagram is blowing up. Yeah, we should have posted a picture today. Should have. I, I should have too. I will post a picture. It was a good opportunity. You're taking and I didn't cross my mind once. These other people got pictures of us. We'll just share them with <laughs> the Facebook uh, yeah, picture. Idea. Yeah, it's fine. We'll, we'll do all that. Um, one step at a time. One step at a time. <laughs> Listen, still. <laughs> Instagram's still a little advanced. Even though Russell says we got a strike on our web bill. I don't know for podcasting, but I don't know. But uh, but yeah. Um, uh, and, you know, if you've dropped off from training, you know, there's no better time to get back into training jiu-jitsu than now, you know? Uh, if you could have done it yesterday, you should have done it yesterday, but you didn't, so let's do it now. Yeah. Right? Just try to get out there, do something, do something to be better every day. And we appreciate you. We appreciate all the listeners. I'm about to feed them to the sharks right now. Get them hyped right now. Yeah. You know the ground is up.